Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. Not a whole lot of racing on this weekend. The series are starting to come to an end and we are now working our way through what's left. That includes the penultimate round of Super GT from Autopolis, NASCAR from Las Vegas, the final round of IMSA and the World Rally Raid Championship, and the penultimate weekends of Formula Regional European and GB3 from Zandvoort. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's jump right in. Super GT from Autopolis, only from a Teggy round to go after this and the title was right open coming in. So this was an interesting one. Could anyone pull a gap going into the final round? It is also a recipe for a tricky race as some drivers get desperate to score points. Masaki Gioni in the RQ Mercedes was an early victim of this effect but others carried damage early. That included the Arta Honda of Super Formula Superstar Tomoki Najiri. That after coming out of the pit to repair damage, went off at turn 1 and very quickly returned to the pits. Sion Koide in the up garage Honda was the next car taken out, not a good couple of races for that team after being disqualified in the last race. Despite all the contact on track, there was some amazing racing going on and amazing overtaking. But Ricky Akuza was spun around yet another incident and we weren't even a fifth of the way into the race. The hits kept coming and they just wouldn't stop coming. We got a full course yellow when Ramey Ito lost a wheel. Then as soon as it stopped, Yugo Iwasawa, who had just taken over from Ito, went off and retired, bringing it out again. The number 8 Arta Honda went off again, a terrible weekend for them, and we were now just at the halfway point. Enough has happened to fill a normal season of Super GT, it's just a crazy race. It all calmed down a bit after that, but there were some fantastic battles on track. Ritomo Miata pulled off one of the best overtakes I've seen all year in any series, and this, along with his Super Formula form, shows he is a name worth keeping an eye on. He's only 24, and he is an incredible driver. He pulled off a stunning move for the lead with 10 laps left. 1-2-3 in this race are 1-2-3 in the championship, and so the final round in Motegi will see six drivers in the race to become champion. Honda versus Nissan versus Toyota. Check this race out. It was a great one. Honestly, one of the best races in any race series in 2023, and with a very tense and exciting last 15 laps or so. Great stuff. Let's get NASCAR out of the way now. I will say I will be watching this series closely in 2024 because I am a massive Shane Van Gisbergen mark and I want to see him do well. For now we have the final 8 drivers left in the playoffs to decide who will be champion. So Las Vegas. Well it was another NASCAR oval race. Carl Larson survived a brush with the wall to win both stages and the race. He'll be in the final 4. Out of the final eight, only Larson and Martin Truex Jr. have been championed before, although Denny Hamlin has come close multiple times. Help Christopher Bell was 12 when Hamlin took his first NASCAR win. Next race is in Miami, but we only have a few weeks of NASCAR left in 2023. The IMSA went into its final race for Petit Le Mans, with a few cars in contention in most of the classes. Some big crashes, one that took out Nick Tandy in the Porsche through no fault of his own, and their title hopes were over. I think some questions have to be raised over driving standards here. Too many crashes, an embarrassing incident between a BMW and another car in the pit lane after they failed to stop for a red light. Wayne Taylor's championship hopes ended in the dark. Felipe Albuquerque got given the heave-ho out of the race. More crashes followed, but emerging from the wreckage was the Whelan engineering Cadillac of Alexander Sims and Pippa Durrani to take the title despite finishing 6th. Tom Blomqvist, Colin Braun and Helio Castroneves actually won the race. A messy end for the IMSA, but it's been great getting a preview of the BMW Hypercar all year and I have enjoyed this series. I look forward to the 24 hours of Daytona in 3 months time. I'm going to talk briefly about the World Rally Raid Championship. Did you know it ended this week with the Rally du Mirac? Nasser Al Attaya has dominated the series for a second year in a row in the car category. But he is leaving Toyota, so it'll be interesting to see if he can keep up that same level of success he's had with them with a new team. Time will only tell. Other big names include Seb Loeb, Carlos Sainz, Matthias Ekstrom, Martin Prokop, Stefan Petter Hansel, and a lot of other talent spread between buggies, bikes, quads and trucks. But I think the series is advertised poorly, shot terribly, and the recaps are subpar. I will say the live map is brilliant, a real stroke of genius, but it needs to improve visually to bring new fans into what could be a very exciting series to watch. And please change the name of the Dakar. If you're not going to Dakar, it needs to change. They need to invest heavily in drones, improve spectator friendliness of at least some stages, generally make a bigger deal over what could be a much larger series. Currently their videos on YouTube only do slightly better than mine, and I'm one guy sitting on a kitchen chair complaining about the World Rally Raid Championship on the internet. 
As for the 2023 Rally du Maroc itself, Nasser Al Altai was not able to keep up his strong form after a drive shaft issue cost him a lot of time on stage 4. Seb Loeb fell into a ditch on the same stage. Stefan Petter Hansel ran into troubles. It all left Saudi Arabian Yasser Al Raji to take the win. And honestly, if they can make some minor improvements, I would be really looking forward to this series in 2024. Formula Regional European was in the Netherlands at the Zandvoort track. We actually had a really clean start to a Formula Regional European race and it took 10 minutes to ruin the calm. Giovanni Maschio of Monolite ended race 1 in the barrier and brought out the safety car. After that, it was a pretty dull race, very few overtakes, but a Dutch winner in the Dutch lands. Cass Havercourt takes his first win of 2023 in the Van Amersfoort, the Dutch driver in the Dutch car winning in the Netherlands. Kimi Antonelli was second and could win the championship in race 2, which started on a very damp track. And Andrea Kimi Antonelli put in a champion's drive, overtaking everyone in front of him in the first five minutes and taking the lead. Nikita Bedrin and Rafael Kamara had one hell of a battle as the rain started to come down again. Unfortunately, Kamara tried to squeeze Bedrin and ended the race in the gravel, something that has happened to the Brazilian far too often in 2023. He looks really impressive at times, but makes far too many mistakes. Then, under the safety car, chaos erupted. Emerson Fittipaldi Jr. spun and was collected by Maya Rug, and... Big damage. Another scary Formula Regional crash in 2023, but happily everyone was okay, but that brought out the red flag. The restart was nothing too exciting, and Antonelli won the race with an age to spare. And is your Formula Regional European 2023 champion. He has rockets strapped to his back, but in all honesty, no one else has really been that impressive in Formula Regional European this year. Martini Stenson in the first half of the year, maybe, but even drivers I had high hopes for, like Sammy Megatune for Lorenzo Fluxer and Tim Tramitz, have been disappointing. As for this round in particular, usual freck affair, too many stoppages, not enough racing action to really get invested, but Andrea Kimi Antonelli will be in a Prima in Formula 3 in 2024 and will possibly be an early favourite for the title. One day, he will be in Formula 1. GB3 was also coming to us from Zandvoort and we got contact before the first corner with James Headley coming off worst. That brought out the safety car, or maybe it was Michael Shin stuck on the grid. But there wasn't too much else to this race, some good overtakes and a win for Alex Dunn. Race 2 started with a safety car but that kept the pack close and there were some good battles, especially Callum Voisin and Joseph Loke. The two title rivals got very close, not as close as Matthew Reese to Jared Varbuski, who got sent wide very rudely. It was a good race with some good battles as well, out in front Alex Dunn took another fairly easy win. If a car spinning on a wet grid as it lined up isn't a sign of things to come, I don't know what is, maybe call me Mystic Meg. But I just knew we were going to see some carnage here. And there were several different incidents with the biggest being James Headley crashing into a stationary JRJ. We had a long safety car, then a restart with Daniel Mavlatov taking the lead, followed by Patrick Holzenroder hitting the wall at the top of the banking, among others crashing. Safety car back out, and that was the race done. Race 3 was a bit of a dud, but the other two were entertaining. One weekend left at Donington Park, this weekend actually. Callum Voisin, Joseph Floke and Alex Dunn are all pretty close, but even Mackenzie Cresswell has a chance. Should be an interesting final round. So that was all the action from last weekend in this much delayed roundup. Race of the weekend has to be the Super GT from Autopolis. A lot happened in that race, some great overtaking and an exciting end to the race. The 22nd of October sees a lot of championships coming to an end. We have the final rounds of DTM, European Le Mans, TCR Europe, TCR UK, Formula Regional European, GB3, British GT, Euro Formula and the F1 Academy, along with NASCAR and Formula 1 in America. So with all that to look forward to, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. Join the channel if you so wish. Most importantly of all, have a good one.